Okay, so in this short presentation, let's go over how we um, uh, check the uh, second derivative test for those two functions that we did in the, in the written part of the course. And in particular, we'll uh, show how to do this. I mean, how the um, uh, case when the second derivative test is not applicable, how does the function actually look uh, around those points uh, in that case? So let's see if we make this a little bit bigger. Um, all right, so we're going to start with um, f of x, which is the um, the first function we talked about. And this is how it looks like, well, I mean, in, in the range of uh, in variables minus 1, 1. So I mean, when seen, seen on this interval in this domain, right? So I just basically chose the domain to be a rectangle. You can make you can play around with um, the bounds for x and y however you like because it's defined everywhere for any x and y but it's not actually quite clear cut what the what the low um, minimum i mean what's the local min max uh is um because it's quite it's nearly flat but we're going to rewrite this graph we're going to redraw the graph with um a viewing window closer to the actual point itself I just wanted to point out that actually just by looking at the function from um, from the distance, it may not be obvious whether you have a relative minimum or maximum. Sometimes it's obvious if it's, of course, a big drop or uh, increase, but otherwise, if it's kind of shallow, it's not easy to see. So I mean, it's nothing really uh, special what we're going to do here. We can just um, let Maple compute the partial derivatives and just assign them in some variables that are named suggestively, like fx from partial x, um, fy for partial y, then the second derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to x and y, and then the discriminant. Um, I use actually double d here because I didn't bother to rename if uh, just d has a, is a reserved symbol, and you know, either you redefine it or you use something else. Okay, so um, we already computed by hand the critical points. Um, and those critical points were, if you remember, 0, 0, 2, 1, or we can let Maple actually to compute the critical points for you. So in fact, actually, let's just, uh, let's just do that, see. Um, do actually everything um, with Maple. So you set the partial x equal to 0, partial y equal to 0, and then you solve this for x and y. Okay, so you have 0, 0, and 2, 1. And I think these ones, I don't know, these are basically, oh yeah, there are also complex roots that we don't uh, take into account here. There are, there are also complex roots in that, in that system. But the one that we um, were concerned is 0, 0, and 2, 1. So the first thing to do is to evaluate the discriminant at, uh, at the point in, in question. You could also define a discriminant, I suppose, as a function, which maybe is going to be easier, you know, but let's just use the um, evaluate at the point feature here. Uh, with maple so we evaluate x at zero and zero i mean the discriminant of zero and zero and because it's negative then of course we conclude that it's it's a saddle uh then if we plug in the other point um to one the discriminant is positive for th for 32 and then we're gonna have to then look at the sign of uh, the second derivative with respect to x. And obviously, this is positive. We don't need to let Maple um, handle it, but oh, we can just, I suppose, do that. Um, and therefore, the uh, actual point is a local minimum. Now, the other function, um, oh, I said that how do we visualize the local minimum? So, so first of all, actually, let's visualize the saddle. Let's actually redraw the graph here uh, with uh, viewing window really close to zero. So let's say minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 and then minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 for the domain. All right, so I hope it's pretty clear. This is how the saddle looks like. The, the actual pointer is right here in the center, meaning that it's neither a local min nor max. However, if you imagine this is a hill, 
If you go on a certain path, it feels like going toward the relative maximum. If you go from this path from the left to the right, the way I show you with the mouse, then it feels like it's a local mi minimum. I mean, it looks like a local minimum. So that's that's essentially the ma a mathematical description of uh, something in the shape of a saddle. So that's that's one of those uh, points identified by the second derivative test in addition to the local min or max. Uh, what about the local minimum? So we have to center it around two one for x and y. So uh, centering around two that means let's say one point uh, eight and let's say. 2.2 that's close to 2 in the center and then for 1 i want i'm gonna, i want to say uh, 0 0.8 all the way to uh, 1.2 and it's very shallow but i mean i hope it's clear now that we have a local minimum there right if we see it from the side over here okay so let's get this out of the way, this, uh, this example, and let's see how those partial derivatives look like for the, for the other function that I said it has um, um, kind of more complicated partial derivatives and it has also critical points for which the second derivative test doesn't apply. I'm going to just change f of xy with g of xy and leave, technically I should call them gx, gy, but we're going to leave these variables the same. So um, we start with partial x of g, partial y, um, and then the mixed derivatives, I mean the, the second order der derivatives. Discriminant obviously is far more complicated. You could also, if you want, you could simplify it a little bit. Um, and the exponential will factor, obviously. It's still kind of complicated anyway. Let's see what Maple says about the partial, the critical points. If we set uh, gx and gy equal to zero, and I think it's going to be kind of complicated. Well, for some reasons, let me see. Did I? Oh yeah, sorry. I uh, I have to use uh, f x f y because I use the same variables for the for the partial derivatives. <clears throat> so you see, x equals zero, y equals y, right? So you, we have zero y, right? So infinite many critical points in which x is zero and y has an arbitrary value, and actually that's that's all there is to it because well, not really. But for some reason, uh, Maple doesn't give me the the answer here. Probably I have to tell maple that these are actually real points i suppose um see this is root of two uh, x squared minus one two y squared minus one this is the root of uh one over two so you have actually one plus minus one over two minus one plus minus one over two so for example one critical point um is in the form of one um one over um, um square root of two Okay, but um, let's see. Let's actually test, I suppose. Let's test this one. I'm not going to test all of them before I show you the graph. So first of all, if we look at the graph again in that uh, larger viewing window, let's say minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Again, it's kind of hard to see the high and the low points. Um, but in terms of zero y, so let's let's um, let's see what happens with the discriminant if I evaluate it at zero y, right? So I mean, obviously there's going to be zero. I don't even have to do much because you can see here x as a factor. So if we evaluate at the point x equals zero and let y vary, obviously this is zero. So the points zero y are um, for for those points, the second derivative test doesn't apply. If we look at the actual graph of the function, uh, let me see if I can show you this. Whenever x is 0 and y there is, you're looking at this, basically this line here right in the middle. These are all, where are all those critical points of the form 0, y. So if you look carefully, actually half of them, roughly speaking, right? I mean, this the left half are local 
uh, you can, which of them you can think of it as a maximum and these ones are minimum, right? So therefore they can be anything, right? And um, uh, I suppose you can also, um, the one zero zero, you can also imagine it kind of close to a saddle essentially. But again, their nature is, um, um, it can be any of the, any of the three. But the second derivative test, the point is the second derivative test will not tell you which one is which. What about one root two over two? Let's see what happens if I evaluate the discriminant at that point. So one, one over square root of two. Um, the discriminant is positive. So that means I also have to look at um, the partial x with res I mean the um, second derivative derivative with respect to x. And again, let's evaluate this at the point two one. Not two one, sorry, uh, what was it? One uh, one over root two. Negative. So this, according to the second derivative test, should be a local maximum. So let's see if we can graph the function close to these points, right? One over root two um, in decimals, that's 0.7, right? So we have to center the um, graph around the points one and 0.7. So let's say uh, x range is again 0 0.8 and 1.2. And then we're going to say for y, uh, 0 0.5 and let's say 0 0.9. I should see then the top of a hill basically in that graph. Obviously, that's the case, right? So there it is in the center of the local maximum. So I hope it's clear. Um, then uh, with that, um, we uh, conclude this lesson and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>